Hey, everybody. How are you? Mike Catherwood here, and this is the Mikey Likes You podcast live and direct from the Panocha Grande Ranch near Austin, Texas, somewhere nebulous. Um, so it's the holidays, and uh, I actually feel a little bit bad that I didn't do this podcast prior to Thanksgiving, but uh, here we are. It's a couple days after Thanksgiving, um, and you know, I really, I realized, and these are the the topics that I like to do on the podcast because it, it, it happens organically. Something smacks me upside the head and makes me realize that there's an actual need, that there's a, a, a demand in the market for something like this, but um, the holidays, right? The holidays tend to really throw a wrench in our system. Certainly, it's well known that the holidays can be... Um, the bane to any good diet and that there's always going to be weight gain attached to the holidays and all these things. And I love them. I have come to, I have grown to love Christmas time, Hanukkah time, Thanksgiving time, the whole thing. I did not grow up feeling that way, but I just absolutely love the holidays now. And I think it's a large reflection on just how happy I am as a person overall. Um, <clears throat> But the holidays, they, they, they can pose problems for your physique and then how you feel about yourself subsequently. So I have collected, and these are from, just pulled from my life. Because the more and more neurotic I would get about my weight and my appearance, the more and more I would come to have trouble around the holidays. And so I started to build up these defense mechanisms, coping mechanisms, and also just tips to get by and to make you not only deal with it a little bit better when it comes to weight gain, weight loss, but also just to be happier. Um, so these are my top five holiday tips when it comes to looking your best um, and not allowing the holidays to drag you down into depression. Number one, and I think this is really important, you are not a professional or competitive athlete. Okay? What I mean by that is we all sacrifice some level of our happiness or our comfort for the sake of our occupations. The hope is, is that you sacrifice now and then somewhere down the line, you get back. There is some type of delivery of happiness in the long run. I have sacrificed lots of sleep for the sake of my career, you know, in, in radio, especially early on. Um, but my, my hope was, is that yes, I'm not, I'm sleeping four hours a night at most, but in the long run, this is going to pay off and I'm going to be happier. Um, how many people sacrifice time that they'd love to spend with their family? You know, all of us, if you have children, especially you want to spend time with your family, but you know that you have to go and plug away at work because that's going to benefit the family overall. So you sacrifice the now, your comfort now for the ho hopefully for the, the greater good in the long run. Not having pie or, or calculating and, and tracking all your calories at, at a Christmas dinner or at a holiday party is sacrificing your happiness now for no payoff in the long run, unless you're a professional athlete or a performer or a model, but most of us are not. So don't compromise your mental health and your well-being for something that's not going to give back to you in the long run. The holidays are about togetherness. They're about enriching your spirits. Don't allow your kind of anal retentive nature to prevent you from doing that, from enriching your spirits. Have that slice of pie. Go have those tamales with your family. Mashed potatoes. The camaraderie. The, the solidarity that, that comes around the holidays is better than any meal and it's better than any present that you may receive. And you're definitely going to deprive yourself of something if you're constantly being guarded about everything that you're eating at holiday parties and around the holidays, okay? So just remind yourself you're not an actor, you're not a professional athlete, you're not someone who's competitive, and your body, your, your paycheck doesn't depend on your abs. Now, if they do, we all understand that there's a different set of boundaries, right? But if you're not, like most of us, understand that you know, I'm someone who loves being lean and muscular. I do. I love it. And I'm willing to put in the work to get there. But I can tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, 
mental health, family bonding, bonding with friends, social networks, feelings of joy, and the feeling of living your life instead of letting life live you is far more important and is far more valuable than any amount of leanness or muscularity, okay? So just remember, tip number one, you're not getting a paycheck for your body. So just relax, enjoy yourself. Now, please, when thinking of tip number one, think of tip number two. And tip number two is, you are also not a fucking slob, okay? There's a big difference between enjoying yourself and putting your mental health first by, by having those kind of moments of bonding surrounding food, enjoying the mashed potatoes and the gravy, and spending the entire day stuffing your face just because it's some arbitrary day on a calendar. Having a slice of pie after your nice stuffing and, and, and turkey will bring you joy. Having 25 handfuls of rice, uh, of Chex Mix, followed by two bowls of onion dip, then getting to the meal and having four biscuits and four pounds of turkey with stuffing and gravy all on top of that, then topping that off with uh, 11 beers and four slices of pie will not bring you joy. In fact, it will perpetuate, if not strengthen your depression. Understand that there is a middle ground between being an anal retentive prick and a glutton. Bringing your Tupperware full of broccoli and chicken breast to your company party is not healthy. But on the alternative end, eating ad nauseum just because it's around you and it's the holidays is not healthy either. Understand balance, understand the middle ground. Do what's best for you and your well-being and be honest about that, and I guarantee everything will work out. You can enjoy all the foods that you like to enjoy, not deprive yourself, but also not, not punish yourself simply because it's some time of year, okay? So tip number one, you're not, an, you're not a professional athlete. You're not a slob, though. Tip number three, and I know this sounds like hippie horse shit, but live in the moment. I can't tell you how many people, and I guarantee there's so many of you that are watching and listening to this that have no problem following a very strict diet. There's tremendous adherence Monday through Friday and the weekend comes and you just go fucking haywire. Why is that? Because idle hands become puffy fat fucking hands. <laughs> Where your mind is at has a profound effect on your eating habits. Um, Scrolling through Instagram for six hours while you casually watch the NFL waiting for that holiday meal to be prepared, uh, thinking of things to do and just kind of passing the time is a recipe for you to then eat things that you don't even truly want. When your mind is engaged, you're at work or you're dealing with your, your family or your, your training, things like that. When you're focused, when you're present, when you're in the moment, you have a higher level of self-awareness. And so much of our hunger is actually just distraction. It's actually just boredom. And your mind goes to something that's readily available, completely socially accepted, and will give you that immediate sense of doing something. So when you're you're, you go over to your family's house and dinner's in three hours and you're sitting there talking to your your uncle or your brother-in-law and you're not necessarily having the greatest time and then you start scrolling through Instagram and you're doing nothing and your mind is wandering, you'll look over at that bacon-wrapped hot dog or you know the, 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 the stuffed hors d'oeuvre, who knows what it is, right? Or the bowl of M&Ms. Before you do that, take a deep breath. Really ask yourself, am I hungry? Or am I bored? This is something that can be carried over into every day, obviously. Um, and, and try to snap back into presence and awareness. A real sense of mindfulness goes a long way. And I firmly believe, and I try to impart this message to everyone, and it wasn't for many years until I learned this myself and started to practice this. And it really paid off huge dividends. I always assumed that 
following a diet, following a, a, a strict training um, routine was, uh, it was a byproduct of willpower. And it's not. It has very little to do, uh, sure. There are those days when you just don't want to eat what you're eating or you, you want to eat more of what you're eating or you don't want to go to the gym and you, and you push through. There is willpower involved, but it is not a large factor. A much larger factor is real, visceral self-awareness. And scouring through the pantry on a Saturday morning because you're not at work and you're kind of like, well, I don't know what to do. And you're, next thing you know, you've dusted off half of the, the jar of peanut butter. It is not you being undisciplined. It is not you having a lack of willpower. It is truly just a lack of self-awareness. Take the time. Have a trick if you need. Snap your fingers. If, if it's breath work, something. Have a, uh, uh, a guy I used to really respect in the strength world. I forgot. It was either Christian Thibodeau. It was someone in, kind of in that T Nation world. Maybe it was Dave Tate. But used to wear a, a um, rubber band around their wrist. And they would just snap it. Snap that rubber band. And it, would, it was the cue for them to kind of put themselves back in. It's like, really, let me do some inventory here. How am I feeling? Where am I at? Let me get back into my body. I've been spending too much time on Instagram. I've been spending too much time on, you know, my Netflix show that I'm watching. Let me get back in touch with how I really feel, who I really am, and where I'm at right now. I'm not distracted. I'm, I'm going to focus in, okay? That pays huge dividends in every aspect of your life, not just with, um, with your eating. But uh, it is particularly important, I think, in the holidays because we have much more time on our hands. And there is a lot more of there's a lot more situations where we're kind of forced into boredom, right? Um, you have to go to other people's houses or you're throwing a party or there's just more downtime. And more downtime often leads to um, a, a distorted appetite or at least a perceived appetite that is not really there. All right, so stay in the moment. Tip number four, and this is the most, what, Gloria? Do you want it? My dog here. Hey, baby. Here, come here. Um, tip number four, and this is one that's really tangible, okay? Front load your protein. All right, all right, I'll let you in. Tip number four, front loading protein. I always encourage people to have a protein dominant diet. Uh, protein has a higher level of satiety. It keeps you more full. It gives you a better sense of being full. It also has a higher thermic rate uh, than compared to the other two macros being carbohydrates and, and fat. Protein actually burns more calories to digest. Um, so it ha has a higher thermic body rate inside. So for the dieting athlete, um, a high protein diet is, is really, really wise. It's very practical. But one thing that pr protein does very well also because of its satiety feeling, because of the way that it gives you a sense of fullness is that if you really not only prioritize it throughout your day by eating a protein dominant diet, front load your protein by eating it first and filling up on it, it has a much better effect of giving you um, a more reasonable sense of hunger to then attack the other stuff that's more fun and, and yummy, yummy. So you show up at that company party or you show up at that family dinner, chow down on the turkey first, get a good sized serving, then move on to the fibrous vegetables, green beans, salad, things like that. Then with what's left over, you will have a lot better chance to then control the amount of biscuits and pie that you eat um, if, you've done, if you've done your due diligence and front loaded that protein. Uh, if you're like me and at Christmas time, tamales are on the docket, you know, so you can't, there's not really protein available to, to front load, slam some whey protein isolate. Um, whey protein is incredibly, whey protein isolate especially is incredibly quickly digested, incredibly quickly digested. That is why bodybuilders have found it so valuable in a post and pre-workout um, situation. But one of the other kind of byproducts and benefits of that is that it is incredibly filling. That, that sense of being full subsides quickly, and that's why I don't recommend whey protein in comparison to other slower digesting proteins like uh, casein or milk protein isolate 
for the dieting athlete because you know a slower digesting protein will keep you fuller longer so better better in like an overall dieting dieting sense but for the first 20 to 30 minutes after ingesting whey protein you feel very full because it's just getting rapidly into the bloodstream and it gives you a really tangible really noticeable feeling of fullness so i will slam 50 grams of whey protein 40 grams of whey protein right before i eat um if i know i'm going to you know a, a friend's house for dinner and i don't want to be rude and not eat the food that they're preparing me or, or if I'm going out to dinner or if I'm going over to a holiday meal. I'll slam that whey protein and it does give me such a much better control over um, the foods that I choose to eat. And then I can enjoy myself and not feel like I'm going to go too far overboard. And it seems effortless. But remember that that does subside. Um, so try to time it as well as you can. You can even slam it before you show up um, if you know that you're going to be eating pretty soon. Um, for you vegans out there who are not going to take whey protein, essential amino acids has a very similar effect if you use 10 to 15 grams. So try to take that, you know, a vegan uh, sourced, most essential amino acids, um, good products are going to be from a vegan source. And uh, you can you can slam those um, right before you go in to have that meal that you're going to, you you know, you might be engaging in some eating that isn't normal for you. Um, yeah, so there you go. Front load the protein and uh, use that little whey protein trick if you don't have access to a good source of protein at the meal that you're eating. And finally, this tip, I can't take full credit for it. This comes from Pantera, the great Pantera. Um, and that is yesterday don't mean shit. Okay? We're all going to do it. No one's going to be perfect. You could take all of the four preceding tips and apply them. And sure, there's going to come those times where you, you knock back four or five more drinks than you wanted to. And now you're fucking loose and you just crushed 14,000 calories worth of food. And you, you're, you're unbuttoning the top button on your pants or letting out your dress, whatever it is. You know, you know that feeling. It's going to happen. Okay. It happens, especially around the holidays. Don't try to then go into panic mode and alter your life and your training protocol in order to try to make up for all the damage you've done. Yesterday is behind you. Acknowledge that it happened. Acknowledge that moments of it might have been quite enjoyable, but it happened and now all you have to do is focus more. And focusing more doesn't mean now fasting for two days and doing tons of cardio to try to, to, try to mitigate the damage that you've done. Focusing means applying more focus to your already pre-existing nutrition plan and training plan. And every one of you, I don't care what level of health, what age you are, what point in your life you're at, should have some form of consistent training program and some idea of a, a framework of how you eat. So don't try to alter that to make up for things that you did yesterday. Today is happening now. Acknowledge that last night happened. You went overboard, fine. The only thing you should alter is your mindset because now you're going to become more focused. All right? I hope you all have the greatest holiday ever. We all deserve it because the last couple years have been fucking rough. It's only varying degrees of crazy, right, since the, the pandemic hit, and it's been tough on everybody. So I genuinely feel from the bottom of my heart that your holiday season uh, could, could be your best ever. And I, I genuinely wish that that's, that's the case. Um, I'm doing good. <laughs> In this crazy mixed up world that makes you think that nobody cares. Remember, I do.